Hello everyone and welcome to the Worldwide Center of Math video series on how to use your TI-84 graphing calculator. So in this video I'm going to be taking you through some of the probability features of your TI-84 graphing calculator. The first thing I'm going to show you is the probability menu. To find it we go down to the math key under alpha we hit math and you'll notice along the top here there's one that says prob for probability so we'll arrow over to probability. Uh, there's a few functions here. The first one, uh, if you ever have a need for it, is rand. It generates a random number between 0 and 1. Uh, not often useful, but good to know. Uh, the first one I'll take you through is NPR, which is for permutations. N being the set and R being the uh, objects we're arranging from the set, if you're familiar with your permutations. So we click it, uh, the first number is our n, so the set of objects we are pulling from. So let's just choose 5, and then we'll choose 3 for our r, and if we hit enter it calculates the number of ways to arrange our objects from a set of 5. Similarly, if we go back to math and go over to prob, there is NCR, which is for combinations, which is the number of way to choose R objects from a set of N. So again, if we click it, it asks, it's similarly formatted. We choose our N, say 5, arrow over, cursor, choose 3. We hit enter, it calculates the number of ways to choose 3 objects from a set of 5. Additionally, in that probability menu, if we go math and over to probability, there is a factorial key here under 4. If you're familiar with factorials, it multiplies uh, all the numbers less than or equal to the number you give it. So if we go back to our home screen as I just did, you have to enter a number first, say 5, and then go over to the probability screen again, arrow down, little exclamation point for factorial. 5 factorial should multiply 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, all the integers less than or equal to 5. We hit enter, we get 120, which is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Uh, now I'm going to take you to the probability distribution menu. These will contain things like normal distributions, binomial distributions, so to find it, we hit the second key, and above VARS on the right under your arrow pad, you see DISTR for distribution. So we click var, second VARS, and now we see a whole bunch of distribution functions. I'm going to first take you through for uh, a normal distribution. So if, we're, if we have a normal distribution, we often have, are given a mean and standard deviation and we're often interested in calculating the probability of something occurring in a range of values. So we're going to choose number two for normal CDF, which stands for normal cumulative distribution function. So if we hit enter, it, ha it asks for four inputs, lower, upper, mu for mean, and sigma for standard deviation. So let's say I'm interested I have a data set with a certain mean and standard deviation, and I'm interested in the probability that it falls between the values of 4 and 11. So we just hit 4, then we arrow down, we hit 11, then we arrow down again to mean. Let's say the data has a mean of 7, arrow down, and a standard deviation of 2. And then we hit this paste button, we arrow down, hit enter over paste. And it brings us back to the home screen with its function entered in normal CDF, the values we entered in the order that it processes them. We hit enter again, and it gives us a decimal value which represents the probability. So 91% probability, uh, given our data here, that uh, our value would lie between 4 and 7. Now, if, we, if our um, data or events occurring are binomial in nature, we can again go to second bars for distribution, and we can arrow all the way down to binomial P 
PDF and CDF. The binomial PDF will calculate the probability of uh, a certain number of successes in, a, in n trials. So if we go to PDF, we hit enter, it asks us for the number of trials. Let's say there are 25 trials. P value, which is the probability that a given trial succeeds. So let's say there's a 70% chance of success. And a specific X value. So what are, say, the odds of 15 successes occurring in 25 attempts, given a probability of points of 70%, 0.7. Again, we hit paste, enter, and it tells us that the probability of, that, of exactly 15 successes occurring is 0.091, so 9.1%. Now, what if we wanted uh, the probability of, say, 15 or less successes occurring? Well, similarly, we go to second VARS distribution. We scroll down to binomial again. But this time, we will choose binomial CDF, or again, cumulative distribution function. So this will, again, similarly to normal, this would be a range of values. In our case, we'll do 15 or less successes for binomial. So again, it asks us, we hit enter, it asks us for trials. We'll say there are 20, we'll try 25 trials, same probability. And again, it asks for an x value. Instead of, it, it's not asking for a range because it's automatically assuming that we want this number or less trial or, or successes. So it's going to automatically assume this time that I want the probability of 15 or less successes. So we again hit paste, it goes back to the home screen, we hit enter, and we notice an 18.9% probability for binomial CDF. So these are all the probability functions I'm going to run you through, but you'll notice if you're familiar, if we go back to our distribution menu, there are multiple other types of CDFs and PDFs if you're familiar with chi-squared, F, t-tests, or student's t-distribution. All work fairly similarly to normal and binomial. So, thanks. Thanks for watching. For more videos in this series, or for more general mathematics videos, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking here, or visit our website at centerofmath.org by clicking here. Thanks.